For this video, I'll show you how to transform your SVG icons into fonts for a much easier way to add icons on your application. And I'll also turn into a small web component for ease of use. Support the channel by liking or commenting on this video. Subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. Now, let's dive in. I have prepared a small blank TypeScript project, which I use Vite to generate. The index.html file is pretty minimal with only a link to the icon TypeScript file, which is empty for now. And I already included some SVG icons. We will be using that I downloaded from various places on the internet. First, let's look at how the user experience will look like. I want to have a component tag like PFS icon, for example, that I can place anywhere in my application that allows me to specify the icon name I want to display either via text content or name attribute. I want to also specify the size of the icon using any value with any CSS unit, but I also want to have default name size like small, medium, large, etc. Icons also need color, so I will need a color attribute which I can specify any CSS valid color value or a named color like warning or primary or CTA, which uh, I then give a specific value inside. That should be the tag experience to add an icon to the page I want. Super simple. Now about SVG icon fonts. Well, they are super light and easy to manipulate than just linking SVG icon files in your CSS or HTML. They scale infinitely like SVG and the only drawback is that they can only have one color. Although there are some work around that problem I can share with you in a different video. Let me know if you're interested in the comments. Before we change any SVG icon file into a font, we need to prepare the SVG. For example, this bookmark icon is pretty messy. It contains a lot of things we don't need like metadata, some classes, ID, etc. Also, in order to have fonts, we need all SVGs to contain paths only. So for example, this close icon is created using polygon shape, which is not good. Cleaning up SVG requires you to understand SVGs. I can clean up a lot of this manually, but that does not scale. So let me show you how to automate this. To clean up and optimize our SVG files, I'll install a package called SVGo, which is fantastic. I'll leave a link to it in the description that you can check. Here in the package.json file, I'll add a script called SVG Optimize, where I'll invoke SVGo with F flag for folder and a path to where my icons are. Then use the O flag to tell it where to output the result, which will be the same folder overriding the SVGs. Now, if I run this script with npm run svg optimize and check the bookmark icon, we can see that it is now minimized and is much cleaner now. If we check the close icon, we can see that it is using a path instead of polygon shape, which is perfect. Like that, our SVGs are smaller, cleaner, and using paths only. This is perfect even if you are not planning to change SVG into fonts to just optimize your SVG files before using them, especially if some designers hand them to you at work, it is just optimal and I recommend it you to do it all the time. The SVG generated by Illustrator, for example, oftentimes contain a lot of things we don't need for rendering, which impacts the SVG rendering because it is a much heavier file and contains uh, unnecessary things that you need for the rendering. One advice I can give you for an even better result is to make sure that your SVG icons are one-to-one -one ratio, meaning their width and height are always the same for consistency look, so it better works as fonts. Now, we need to change them into a font, and for that, I'll use the SVG to font package. Again, link in the description if you want to learn more about it. Back in the package.json file, I'll add a new script called SVG to path, where I'll invoke it using sources flag with path of where the icons are and then the output flag with the path to where I want the fonts to be output to. And finally, the font name I want for these icon fonts, which will be BFS for before semicolon. If I run this script, we get this fonts directory with all these files, a React folder, CSS preprocessors files like less, SAS, and much more. I don't want all of this for this, so back to JSON file, I'll add a SVG to font object for options. 
I'll start by telling it the font name here instead, then turn off file for preview website in React since this is not such a project. Then I clean the fonts directory and run the script again. And now I see way less stuff, but still not clean enough. I don't need any CSS preprocessors for this project. So back to the package that I saw on file, I'll add a CSS options specifying what to include. And I only want .css files. Running this again, it is much cleaner, but I want the CSS file not to be in the same fonts directory as the fonts. So I will specify where to put the CSS file with output option and a file name instead of it matching the font name. Now it is output outside, but if we look inside, the path to the font files is not correct because it still path the fonts as if they are in the same directory. So I'll add a CSS path options to where the font files are and run the script again. And now it looks fine. Just perfect for this project. Make sure to check the options for this uh, package and adjust things according to your project. Since we are here, we have the font face declaration at the top with our generated font files from SVG. Then we have a font family declaration targeting anything with BFS dash starting class. Then at the bottom, we have individual classes for each icons we have. Notice that it uses the SVG icon file names prefixed with the font name I gave it. So it is very important to consistently name your SVG icon files and pick a nice font name for this. So how do I use this? Well, back in the HTML file, first thing I'll need is to import our BFS icon CSS file. Then I'll add any inline HTML tag like a span tag and attach a class matching the icon I want to display. For this, the bookmark icon. If I then run my application with npm run local, we can see the bookmark icon displayed. That simple. The best thing we can do after is abstract everything into a nice small web component for icons. Let's do that. I'll first install Kuko to help me with the web component stuff. It makes working with components super simple and it doesn't require you to build anything. In the icon type script file, I'll import it and get the web component class, create a BFS icon class, extend a web component class, and then register my component. That's all I need to create a web component with Kuko. Remember the attributes I want to support, name, size, and color? These will be observed attributes so the icon component updates when they change. Then I'll proceed to give them default values if they are not specified. Now here I can declare my component style sheet and it will be a link, the same link we added to the head of the card document. With web component and Coco, you can specify external CSS file for the component instead of putting the CSS inside the component if you prefer that way. You make sure that the CSS is only included if the component is ever used. Now let's try this BFS icon tag in the page. Checking the browser and inspecting it, we can see our component and inside the shadow root, there is our link tag for the BFS icon CSS file. If we check the network tab, we can see it was imported successfully. You may be asking if you have more than one tag on the page, does it import the CSS files for all of them? Well, no, we can try this by duplicating this tag and comment out the link tag in the, in the head document. If we check the network tab again, we still only see one single request to the CSS file. But there is one thing you need to know. When you have a CSS link inside your web component, it will only fetch the CSS. So if your CSS contains links to files, it will not fetch those files. And that's why I need to have a link in the head tag as well. So it fetches the font files we need. I could remove the need to add the link to the head tag if I created the icon component extending context provider component instead of web component, which automatically handled this for me. That's the power of Google components for you. I'll leave that change in our source code so you can check that alternative link below. Back to our component, I'll first add a getter for the icon name where I'll return the name if it exists or the text content of the component since they are both valid ways to specify the icon name we want to display. Now I declare a template getter and return a I tag with the class to match the font icon and using curly braces to data bind the icon name getter value I just created. Now back in the HTML file, if I specify search as my icon name and check the browser, we see our search icon displayed just fine. Pretty cool, right? 
Now, when I check the network tab, we can see that now it fetches the icon font file. If I comment out the link in the head tag and check again, we see a square, which is what you will see when font file is not loaded or the icon name you specified did not match anything. Again, you can either add the link tag in the head tag, so it also fetches the link files in the CSS file, or change our icon component to extend context provider component instead of web component. Now I'll add a new getter for the font size where I have a switch for the size value and use various default values with names for ease of use and to match the application theme, for example. It is better because it makes it easier to change the entire website icon size in a single place. And hard-coded values should be avoided, but I'll default to it. Now, in the template, I'll use Kuko attribute directive to tell it to add a style attribute for font size with value of our font size getter using curly braces for data binding only if the size value is truthy, aka it has a value. And that's how you programmatically add attributes to tags with Google components. Now I'll duplicate all these search icons and give them each a size name and check the browser. And we see five search icons with different size. Cool, right? Back on the icon component, let's handle color with accent getter using color names in similar switch fashion. In the template, I'll use the same attribute directive to add color style with accent getter value only if the color was specified. Back in the HTML, we can add the color values and check the browser again and see our icons colored accordingly. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know what you think in the comments or like this video to support the channel. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on anything. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye bye.